Hello everybody, we're doing a tutorial on how to do stencils with a jelly plate. You can do monotype processes at home without a professional printmaking press. When you have your jelly plate, you want to store it sandwiched in between sheets of plastic. If you don't, the jelly plate's going to attract all kinds of dust, it's going to get really yucky. You want some type of plastic. I have Duralar here. It is frosted. The Duralar, it's really easy to see. You can use something like acetate, but the problem with acetate is that it's transparent. When you put your shape onto the jelly plate, it's gonna be really hard to see. Really any cutting tool is fine. If you wanna do super refined little cut details, an X-Acto knife is good for that. A pair of scissors is fine. I also like using a matte knife, which is a little bit stronger than an X-Acto. I think if you haven't done this technique before, just play around. Don't try to make anything that looks good because you really want to get to know the process before you try to do something that's a little bit more involved. I just cut random shapes. It looks like claws. You know who has claws? Wolverine! <laughs> See, Hugh, you're in my heart. I want to refine it some more. It's easier to just cut off little slices. You just end up with a million of these little pieces. I think stencils are going to work better for you if you've got some really big shapes, some thin shapes, some medium shapes, so you really get that variety. And now you can take these shapes and put them on the jelly plate like this, and it's so perfect because the jelly plate lets the stencil adhere really well, so you see your stencil is not gonna budge at all. I can totally take this shape and I can have the stencil go off the jelly plate like that. Take some time to just move your shapes around that's the fun part of this particular approach. This really is you composing as you lay down the shape. So you're not getting off the hook as far as composition goes. You can even take the shape and flip it. The ink that I like to use is a Kua. This is water-based printmaking intaglio ink. It's meant to simulate what intaglio ink does, but the big advantage is that it's water-based. Keep in mind with the Akua inks, the thickness of the ink, it varies a lot. This one is really thick. You'll also have ones that are really, really runny. If they've been sitting around for a little bit or if you just bought them, they may need to be mixed. This one, I can see that a lot of the oil is already at the top. And what I just do is take a stick and I just mix it so it's a lot more consistent. You're not gonna wanna have all that oil in there. You wanna make sure that you're using a plastic scraper. You can also use a cut sheet of mat board. You don't wanna use a metal one though, because a metal scraper is actually gonna cut into the plexiglass and that's no good because you're not gonna have a smooth surface anymore. It is so much better to put too little ink rather than too much. Because when you have too little ink, it's really easy to go back in there and just add a little bit more. But if you end up with big blobs of ink, it doesn't do well with the jelly plate. So I always start out with a lot less because you'll be surprised you really do not need a lot of ink for this. I took the ink and I spread it across like this. The reason why is because that now matches about the width of my roller. You wanna go up and down, but you also wanna go side to side. You want this to be really even and consistent. Just do a quick wipe like that. Okay, that is definitely not enough ink. I'm gonna add some more. Yeah, that gets a little bit better. That's a nice even roll. Let's do another pass. You want to make sure you're going side to side and also up and down. You really want to make sure you're rolling past the plate all the way to the edge because a lot of people they'll just ink in the middle and then they'll find that actually the edges in the corners end up being a little bit less inked up than the rest. Just make sure you're really thorough about getting to those corners and the edges. How thick you make the ink is totally up to you. I mean, if you want to do something that's a little bit more transparent, I could have stopped five minutes ago, but I actually decided I wanted the ink to be a little bit more full. Now we get to peel the stencil off. Ooh, that's <laughs> so fun. This little piece is not really wanting to come up because there's another slice on the other side, so I'm just going to take it pull it like that. So be careful. If you have little pieces that are fairly thin, it can be easy to rip your stencil by accident. 
You can see I have a little sliver here. This one, I don't really want to take off with my hands because I'll end up disrupting the ink. What you can do is just take the X-Acto blade and you can just lift it. Ah! Oh crap, you know what happened? Thumbprints on this. That's gonna happen. And here's what you can do. You wanna have the rag be a little bit wet. You wanna make sure your rag is wet enough that you're actually gonna get a nice clean edge. Take the small brayer. It's not perfect. I know the inking with the brayer, it looks easy. It is not. In fact, I think inking plates is one of the most difficult things to do. You need patience to figure out how to troubleshoot all the stuff that comes up. You want to prepare a registration sheet, a sheet of cardboard, acetate on top of it. When I print, if there's some ink that is left over, which is always the case, I can just take a rag and wipe that off. That way I keep the registration sheet nice and clean. I measured the jelly plate. In this case, it's seven inches by five inches. You can do the border whatever you want. If you want to make it really wide, that's fine. You're going to put the jelly plate right on top of the registration sheet, and now you're ready to print. Wash your hands after you put the jelly plate onto the registration sheet. Otherwise, you're going to get fingerprints all over your paper, and that's no fun. This is Reeves BFK, and it's a really good one-size-fits-all printmaking paper. But for a jelly plate, you can totally use any regular drawing paper. With a jelly plate, you can print wet or dry. It really is not a huge difference. I do prefer to print wet. It's just a little bit more sensitive when the ink hits the paper. You want to soak your paper for a little while. You could do it in advance so you don't have to wait for it. Pull it up by one corner and you hold it up like this. It's going to start dripping when it goes down to just a couple of drips. A lot of print shops will have blotters, but really you can just use towels and you want to make sure it's not shiny. If it's shiny, it means that it's still a little bit too wet, in which case you just put it back into the towel. Line it up with the exterior registration lines. You can just use your hands. I know there are a lot of people who will also take another brayer. The important thing is the edges and the corners. Take a peek and see, ooh, that looks pretty good. Now's the moment of truth. Ooh, that actually came out really good. Awesome. This is <laughs> the part where I messed up and there's definitely a lot of variation in there. The other areas where I did not mess up, you can see the rolling is very even and clean. Cannot expect specific results. I mean, you can, you're gonna go crazy though. It's really, really hard to think that way. So just have fun. The best way to clean a jelly plate is with baby wipes, but of course, I don't have any. Take a wet rag, do this. Wipe down your registration sheet. You can trace a piece of the Duralar so that it's the exact same size as the jelly plate. Cut out the sheet, cut some pieces out, and it can really change the way that you consider how these shapes interact with each other. I think a lot of the process of cutting these shapes is tweaking. A little sliver here, a little sliver there, and then eventually I hone in on the shape that I want. You also want to make sure that you're cleaning this plastic scraper because if this has even a shred of this burnt sienna color and I want to do yellow, that is not going to be good. Make sure that your plexiglass sheet doesn't have any of the prior color. I'm going to do a rainbow roll. Use a fairly light color because if you want to put another layer on top, you're going to want to be able to put a darker color on top. And you're going to put it right next to the yellow. Position your brayer like this. This brayer sucks. It's so uneven, like it didn't pick up the ink at all. And that's a sign of a crappy brayer. I'm going to put it so it's like right up against the red ink. I'm going back and forth. What you're after is this quality. This layer of ink is pretty thin because you're going to put another layer on top of this. What I want to show here is the difference between a very fully inked color. And this isn't even as fully inked as it could be. I can see it's a little bit transparent in some of those areas. This is an example where you can see it's really, really light. Put the jelly plate on top of the registration sheet. Soaked my paper, washed my hands, blot it with a towel. 
line this up, rub the surface. Look. Okay, cool. Oh shoot, I forgot to <laughs> crap. I forgot to put the stencil on top. I was supposed to put the stencil on before I did this part. Okay, don't do that. <laughs> okay, what I should have done is I should have rolled the ink and then put this on top. Okay, we need to do it again. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Really, you just have to do it wrong. <laughs> and then you figure out how to do it right. This time I'm gonna press a lot harder. Don't just look at what your plexiglass is doing. You gotta look at the brayer, like check the brayer, make sure you don't see any blank spots because otherwise it's not gonna roll very well. It's totally fine for me to just roll over this again. There's no reason that I should have to go and wash the jelly plate. Put the jelly plate on top of the registration sheet. Wet my paper, wash my hands, blot it with a towel onto the registration sheet. Press down. Wait, I did, oh my God, I'm so stupid. I forgot, oh my God, I'm so dumb. I forgot again. So, okay, well, so here's the thing. <laughs> so like, I totally mess this up again. I'm gonna put the stencil on. I'm, I'm thinking in my head right now, stencil. Place the stencil on top of the jelly plate, line up the edge. Press this down. That stencil was supposed to line up with the edge. Cut a new piece, and now I can place this to cover that little corner. There's actually a lot of flexibility if you don't get it where you want it to be in one go. For the second color, it is better to try to use a color that's significantly darker, you'll get better coverage over the first layer. You really do need a lot of ink. I don't have to roll this to a full blue. I can leave it as a thinner layer. You do have to make sure you press down pretty hard though because there's gonna be all these crevices that you need to get into. Let's peel off the pieces. Put the jelly plate on top of the registration sheet I wet my paper, wash my hands, blot it with a towel onto the registration sheet, rub the surface. Ooh. Some of the red and the yellow paint lifted off with the stencil, but I love these textures. It looks almost like bacteria. This looks like an orange rind. The only part I don't like is this one sliver. The tiniest, tiniest amount. I don't want it to show that much. Probably needs a little touch of red and blend it in. One thing you can try is purposefully rolling your ink in an uneven manner, very lightly at first. Actually, that's too dark. I'm just gonna roll like this so I can get rid of some of the ink. That is so light compared to this. What you wanna play with is putting the strokes in all different directions. And think about how big the shapes are here. This is a really big roll. You can even do strokes that are really short. Play with different pressures. First round of my stencils on this layer. You don't wanna cover it too much with stencils because you're gonna do a second round of stencils. This is one where I put it really, really close. I do try to make sure that some of the stencils are going off because you don't wanna just put the shapes all in the middle. I always have a cup of water, plenty of cotton rags. It's so much easier to clean that way. Red for the next layer. This layer, I'm gonna make it more opaque than the first layer of green. The second layer, I'm gonna press a lot harder and I'm gonna make sure that my ink is significantly darker and thicker. You can press textures into the plate and it's quite sensitive. It really does pick up a lot. I'm gonna use a comb and I'm gonna press down and create groups of lines. Make sure you put a lot of pressure. If you don't do it hard enough, you're not gonna get as crisp of a pattern. Time for a second round of stencils. I'm adding this really large piece because I love the comb pattern. If I don't add a lot of stencil, I'm gonna lose a lot of that comb pattern. This round of stencils, I'm gonna add a lot of stencil pieces. My third color, I want stiffer ink, and also want more ink. This is a roller I use for the green. I don't need to clean it again because the black, it's so dark and thick. That sticky sound, that is telling me that my ink is really stiff and it's also very thick. 
you want to really press hard. You can see this little piece of stencil fell off. I guess that means I should avoid cutting such small pieces. The pieces that are coming off the edge of the jelly plate, these are really easy. I do have a few pieces that are floating in the middle. These I like to take an X-Acto knife, put my jelly plate onto the registration sheet, wash my hands, get out my wet paper, blot it with a towel, line up my paper on the registration sheet, rub the back. God, it looks so good. I like that the green layer is so light, you get a lot of value contrast. And then the comb being so uneven, I think is wonderful. A lot of artists use jelly plate prints as a starting point. If you're gonna add other media, I would really recommend that you do lots of tests on a scrap sheet of paper. In this case, the Reeves BFK, it's really absorbent. You wanna know in advance, okay, how is this really gonna behave when I put it on the paper? After you finish the print, it is gonna be a little bit damp. You want to sandwich it between two sheets of newsprint. If you have blotters, those are best, but really you can live without them. You can just use newsprint. You want to put all of that underneath a really big weight, let it dry overnight, and then they should, in theory, come out nice and flat. Once your prints dry, you want to sign it. And there's actually a very specific way that people expect prints to be signed. This is a monotype, which means there's only one copy. Typically, printmakers make an edition. Say there's 10 copies of the exact same print in an edition of 10. But here, it's one print. And that's what's called an artist proof. So in the lower left-hand corner, you're going to write AP, a title in the center. Just call it Lava Lamp. Here, you're going to put your signature. And in the far right corner, you're going to put the year. So oh, cool, I love printmaking. I hope I could get you all hooked because it is really fun to just nerd out on all these things. Sure. Ah. Shoot. Well. Uh. Excuse me. Oh my god, what am I doing? <laughs> I just did the tutorial, which was like all bombs left and right. <laughs>